Hello everyone, I'm back with another video for you today, and I have a deck for you that is a little bit similar. In fact, quite a lot of the parts are quite similar to a deck I've already showcased on the channel. Uh, but I wanted to do a proper video for what I think is the best pool to deck. So this is a deck which does not have any cards beyond sort of collection level 500 or so. It's all sort of early game stuff, and I think this is the particular deck that you can use in those early levels to very effectively climb and deal with a lot of stuff that you're going to be facing on the ladder. So it is a Guardians of the Galaxy focused deck. A lot of people would probably have you believe that a dinosaur, devil dinosaur style of deck is maybe the best option in pool two, something like that. Well, I don't think it's the case. I think actually you can quite easily counter devil dinosaur by running cards like Shang-Chi, for example, or Enchantress which kind of shut that strategy down in its entirety, really. Then you've got Zoo, which is an option as well, and I think Zoo is pretty strong, but you then run into the likes of Killmonger, potentially, which can hurt if you're not properly set up uh, to deal with that, you know, playing your one-cost cards on turn six or something like that, uh, as I have showcased in a different video, actually. You can check that one out if you haven't already. I'm sure you maybe have. But with that being said, let's talk about this particular deck. So the idea here... Uh, we'll get into it as I reveal each of the cards, but the idea is to uh, storm off a lane using the card Storm, stop people playing cards there in the future. You know, you get one more turn to play a card there and then it's locked off. So you're going to use Storm to lock down a, a location, and then from there you're going to use the Guardians of the Galaxy, which become very, very strong cards in their own right when you are basically for sure thinking the opponent will go to a certain location. Uh, they're very, very powerful there because their on-reveal effects will get a lot of points. So the idea is storm them off and then completely destroy another location with Guardians, maybe with a Shang-Chi as well. But let's talk a little bit about the cards. So first off is a new, fresh card that you guys probably haven't seen me talk about too much other than in the Zoo deck, which is Iron Fist. Now, you might be thinking, what on earth is Iron Fist doing in a Storm sort of Guardians of the Galaxy value-based deck? Well... The idea with Iron Fist is we can synergize him with Vulture, which is a three mana uh, movement card, which can actually be worth eight points when you move it. We're going to synergize Iron Fist with Vulture, essentially to have another turn for possible play with the Storm that I'll talk about in a minute. And there's also the backup of, since we're running a Storm and we're locking off a location, we're actually going to be able to Iron Fist a unit into the Storm lane, uh, getting a surprising amount of extra points there, which the opponent will maybe not expect later on in the game. So two purposes in some way to the Iron Fist. It's just some quite nice surprise value, and it works very well with some of the other stuff we have in the deck. Okay, moving on, we have Rocket Raccoon, another one-cost card. So these one-drops, you don't really want to play them on turn one. They're more like later game plays. Most often we will skip turn one with this particular deck, and that's okay. You don't have to use all of your energy all the time. Uh, oftentimes putting strength into a location where the opponent uh, is already trying to win it very hard, you know, that's not going to be worth anything anyway. So you want to get a feel for the game, how the locations are looking before you really play cards, generally speaking. You know, of course, playing a one energy card can be a good thing, but here, not going to do that. We're going to try to hold on to these for later plays and to surprise our opponent with extra value on turn six and things like that. So with Rocket Raccoon in particular, he ends up being a particularly great card on turn six, when you have six energy, you can synergize it with a five cost card to be a quasi six mana card, essentially Rocket Raccoon plus a five. So that's the idea there. Um, now, of course, you can play it earlier in the game if you see a good opportunity. Maybe you need some extra strength in the storm location. Uh, perhaps you want to just, you know, present a bit more points in a particular area before before the late game. But uh, yeah. Rocket Raccoon, particularly good on turn six. Okay, next we have Scorpion. Scorpion is just going to be quite nice for shutting, uh, for taking away some value from your opponent, uh, getting you a nice sort of five, six point card, oftentimes maybe, maybe more like a four for two. Uh, just a good value card that you can play early on and then follow up with a Storm on that location and having that four points initially already uh, to get you going is quite nice. 
Next we have Star Lord. Same purpose as Scorpion, early game play in the storm, in the location you want to storm, uh, because you can of course get five points if the opponent plays there. So you're just guaranteeing you have more power in a location in the early game so that when you storm a location, uh, you're gonna be set to win it, most likely. So that's the idea of Star Lord. You can also combo it later in the game on turn six with Shang Chi for a really unexpected amount of points. You've got eight from Star Lord plus Shang Chi, and then of course destroying a unit can be worth a whole lot more. So really gives you some surprise swing value that the opponent's not going to expect. Next we have Lizard, another really great two energy card. Uh, just five stats. Again, really good to get it on the board early and then follow up with a storm. That's the idea with the deck. We want to get some strength in a location initially and then storm it on turn three. On turn four, we follow up with a Jessica Jones or a Vulture. And on turn five, we go to town with Claw, maybe. Oh, I'm getting ahead of myself. We've got cards that we haven't revealed yet to talk about. Okay, next up we have Mr. Fantastic. This is just a pretty solid turn three play that you can slam in the mid location. Or you can potentially use it with Storm once the location is locked down. Or just any location that you're locked out of, Mr. Fantastic can help you get over the points, you know, get some points that you need to win that. So uh, just a nice six value, three mana cost card that we can sort of play if we miss our Storm. Or potentially play later on in the game should we need access to those flexible uh, points into another location. Okay, next we have Storm. This is the key card of the deck. Very powerful pool 2 card that you want to be uh, running for this deck, for sure. That is the whole idea. We're going to be, as I said, playing two mana cards initially on turn 2, and then storming that same location. And then we're going to follow up with a 4-drop of some kind, or just some strength in general to secure the win in that location, and allow us to focus on other things. Okay, very good. Next we have Vulture. So this is the card that synergizes with Iron Fist, of course, getting up to... 10 strength from this essentially two card combo which is very very good for pool two and of course the movement value as well you've got to think about it a little bit and make sure you don't you know make sure you're able to move that vulture you know maybe don't uh, necessarily storm in the middle because you're then going to be forced to put vulture in the middle things to think about there for sure storming the left can be quite good because you're going to be able to move the vulture across and whatnot but yeah so vulture really really nice power play i think that's what really uh, distinguishes this deck from the earlier version that I played, and I think it's really, really potent, so don't sleep on that. I think it's a very good card, very good combo. Next we have Shang-Chi, so this is a card that's going to really help you against those, you know, sort of top-tier dinosaur decks that people play a lot in Pool 2. It's a good deck, don't get me wrong. Dinosaur, it's worth a lot of points for 5 mana, for 5 energy, but Shang-Chi will be able to shut them down quite efficiently, and it can really farm those 8 cube wins if the opponent expects to be winning. But then you've got this very powerful tech card waiting for them. Uh, we'll talk about substitutions here. You don't have to play Shang-Chi, particularly if you're not having trouble with dinosaurs. You might be able to outpoint them anyway with your, with your you know, Guardians of the Galaxy later on in the game. But uh, yeah, Shang-Chi, very, very helpful against that sort of other Apex Predator deck in Pool 2, I suppose we could say. Okay, next we have Jessica Jones. This is a really classic, strong early pool card, just eight points in the location. We're gonna play that in conjunction with Storm. So we're gonna play Storm turn three, then follow that up with Jessica Jones for a very difficult amount of points for the opponent to overcome. And from there, it's off to the races, right? We just secure that location. We can do whatever we want in the other two locations. So Jessica Jones, very important uh, as a four, mana, four energy cost card. Okay, next up we have Claw. This is the most flexible card, I think, in the deck. It could be substituted out quite easily for all manner of different things. The idea behind Claw is you can obviously spread the strength around a bit. Same with Mr. Fantastic. Uh, gives you a nice just value, 10 for five, essentially play on turn five if you're lacking anything else that's good. Uh, and it of course lets you get some more strength in that storm lane should you be lacking. So I think Claw's pretty good. It's a little bit awkward with Vulture because Vulture means you wanna play storm on the left. Uh, Claw typically wants you to play storm on the right. So a little bit of anti-synergy there, which might persuade you to run a different card other than Claw. I'll talk about substitutions in a little bit here. Uh, the final card we've got is Gamora, which I think is one of the best five cost cards, perhaps in the game, but definitely in the lower pools uh, as you're climbing the early ranks. I think Gamora is a very, very powerful. You essentially get Hulk stat line for five energy. 
So when combining that with a Rocket Raccoon, we've got a huge potential 16 point swing, which the opponent will not see coming, especially in a contested location uh, that you're fighting for after you've already stormed. So I think Gamora is just so key. I will usually play it on turn six, not turn five, just so you have more of an idea of where the opponent is likely to play their cards at the end. So you play around uh, Daredevil as well as a bonus. Um, not playing on turn five. And yeah, this is essentially the sixth drop of the deck with that Rocket Raccoon. You can even play Iron Fist into Gamora to like grab some strength and then and then move it across if you need that. Very, very nice combos. And uh, yeah, very happy with this deck for pool two deck. I think it performs very nicely if you play it correctly. Let's talk about the card substitutions now. Okay, so what are some substitutions we could run in the deck here? So firstly, I would say taking Claw out is a, a very possible thing that you can do. You can also take out Shang-Chi uh, and perhaps Mr. Fantastic. Those, I think, are the most flexible cuts from the deck. So what could we replace them with? Well, you could play a different tech card. That's the first option. So you could play something like Killmonger if you want to really have a good time into Zoo. You could even think about putting in a Nova to synergize with that potentially. Be careful with your Iron Fist and stuff if you are going to run a Killmonger. Uh, that's why I've cut it from this version of the list, but Killmonger is an option. Uh, Enchantress is an option as well if you prefer that. If you prefer the ability to shut down ongoing as opposed to the Shang-Chi explosive destruction effect, definitely Enchantress is another good tech card that you can run. So those are two decent options instead of Shang, for example. Uh, instead of Claw, you could think about perhaps you want to run a Warpath. This is a card I played for quite some time, actually. Uh, it works pretty nicely if you just focus on two rows very hard. To overcome that stat line it works very well in pool too i think uh where there's not so much shang chi running around maybe there is that's quite probably quite a bit still in pool two but warpath is a good option gives you a backup uh, for that storm location if you miss jessica jones on curve uh, so i definitely recommend perhaps trying out warpath if you have it uh, there's also vision at five mana five energy which is very solid uh play if you don't have anything else to do on turn five you can just slam vision you can then move him to a different location, of course, uh, wherever you need the strength, be it in the storm location, or perhaps you want to do a little feint. Uh, it's going to be less points overall than the claw, though, so, you know, keep that in mind. Uh, the other tech card we could run is Cosmo, but I don't really like it in this deck because it interferes with your unreveals, your storm, your Gamora, your, you know, all this stuff. So Jessica Jones, Shang-Chi, like, I don't know if I like Cosmo, if you're having particular troubles with odin decks or something in in these pools then perhaps you could run it but i wouldn't particularly love it the other card you could consider for the flavor value more than anything is groot you could play another guardian of the galaxy and even drax drax is a pool three card so not really relevant here but those cards fit perfectly fine into this deck they have recently also been buffed so groot is certainly an option perhaps instead of mr fantastic but i think i would just prefer having that mr fantastic sort of tech flexible the pun of the pun uh, value. So I'd say those are the cards you can most likely think about running. You could, I suppose, even think about running like a Scarlet Witch or something like that to uh, to play some mind games with the Storm. Uh, you know, you Storm and then Scarlet Witch it. I don't know if that's any good. Probably not. Uh, but you could consider something like that. But yeah, uh, that does it for card substitutions, I think. I don't think you should change too much about this deck, to be honest. I think it's very decent if you play it well. If you want to see some gameplay with this style of deck, I already have a video on that uh, with a slightly less refined or, you know, it's got a pool three card or two in there, uh, but you can check that video out on the channel if you want some gameplay. Uh, otherwise, I hope this video was helpful. I hope this deck will be helpful for you if you're climbing up those early pools. Uh, let me know how it goes. If you get crushed, I'm sorry, but you're probably doing something a little bit wrong because this deck is pretty decent until you run into those pool three cards from opponents with that being said though guys thanks a lot for watching subscribe for more marvel snap content and i'll see you next time bye bye